almost all of our canoe trips begin at the end of a dirt road. We go from a comfortable house to a loaded car to a freeway to a highway to a dirt road that ends in a parking lot. Old cars that have done the same. And then you leave your car and move to more primitive motor transport. Loading a canoe full of all that is necessary to both survive and enjoy a week in the wilderness. Those first few strokes begin to take you mentally and physically away from all the stuff of that other world and draw you into a world where time moves slower. Is that where you slept on the planet over the water? Oh, well, maybe. Where is it? And here, South Kempton. Yeah, is there a little island? Yeah, probably. The one in the picture? Yeah. Where distances are measured in lakes and porches. That's the name of the bush, I think, is Labrador Cave. taste better and where life revolves around the goal of getting somewhere and enjoying the process. Meals are simple and enjoyed in the most beautiful surroundings. And there's time to rest afterwards. The day begins in the green glow of a tent that heats up fast if you stay in it for too long and thereby cast its inhabitants out to make a fire for breakfast, or catch some fish, or just sit by the water and enjoy the quiet. We're not much for a cooked breakfast at home, having grown up on a variety of barely palatable generic cereals. But out here, oatmeal or pancakes with a cup of hot cocoa goes down well. And then it's time to get moving, or at least decide where to move to. There's a science in how to set a canoe down in the water and load it up and it's practiced many times a day. Balance the weight. Find a good spot for each item. Keep the essentials nearby in case of rain or hunger. And do it quickly and efficiently. Finally, we're off when the tiredness of the day compensates for the aching muscles from yesterday. The hours sitting in the canoe can be spent in a variety of ways. I remember my brother learning his times table in the middle of the canoe. There's thousands of lakes to explore and scenes to take in and they're nearly all connected through a network of trails called portages. Portages are not for the faint of heart. They require a good bit of stubbornness, technique, and mind over matter. Pick the canoe up, lean back, and center it over your hips. Reach across with one arm and grab the other gunnel while tilting the canoe towards you. 
rock it while tightening your stomach muscles and throw it into place. Adjust your feet and off you go. Even a Duluth pack and some gear are enough to make a little walk through the woods difficult. Especially if you have a pack up front or a pregnant. Then it's just a guess again as to where your feet will go. But it's best not to think too much about it and just plot on. Up hills. Set up camp and enjoy supper, sunset, and if you're lucky, some blueberry cheesecake. By the end of a trip, both your body and the group as a whole like a well-oiled machine. You head back into civilization with feelings of excitement, anticipation of a good shower, and pride at what you've accomplished together. Yeah, it was great. I wanted to give up on Tuesday. If it rained all week, I would have given up, but it worked out great, and now the rain is just coming and rain off, and it's been up. Great trip, especially the grassy lake portage. <laughs> Actually, that was a difficult part of it, but it was lovely being with each other together. Great trip and lovely companions. Can I have a car key, please? <laughs>